During this past week, while we were filming our training minutes out here in Indianapolis, the unfortunate events of West Texas, as well as the bombing in Boston took place. All of us here at PL Vulcan Fire Training Concepts give our sincere condolences to the families and the first responders that were affected by those tragedies. Welcome to Fire Engineering's Training Minutes. I'm Mark Gregory, along with Pat Nichols and Jim Sanders. Today we're going to discuss creating a man and machine bag. The tools that we have here are pretty basic, and what we want to do is show you how you can keep them in a quick hit bag in order to start an operation to uh, extricate somebody in different type of situations. We're using a basic Klein style bag here, nice canvas bag. You want to make sure that your bag is durable and is capable of carrying the proper tools. Don't become a pack rat. You don't need to load this bag up with 8,000 different tools. Just some basic simple tools and if you need further equipment you can always go back to the rig and get it, get it from your staging area. Start off with basic EMS gloves, as well as hand protection and your goggles. Right? You got to think about personal safety. Some of the products that we have here today, an IV drip line. What we use this for is cooling operations. Um, you'll see later on in some of our uh, other broadcasts that we need to cool as we're cutting. Let's say we're uh, taking a ring off of somebody or if we're doing a uh, man and machine operation such as the meat grinder, you need to uh, provide cooling as you do your cuts. The IV drip line works very well. Pat's going to show you. We also have our soap. Soap works good as a lubricant. We use it a lot for uh, different type of ring jobs that we get, as well as bottled water. You can put a quick little pop in the top here and use that as a cooling solution. Gauze acts as a pretty good heat sink. You can, again, you can wrap it around the victim, such as an impalement wet it down with your bottled water or your irrigant solution and again that'll provide a nice coolant for you and it will last for a while. This little invention that we have here is just some simple piano wire with two pieces of rebar and what we've done is we use that for swings. If you get a, a child or an adult that's stuck in a uh, baby type swing we're able to use this piano wire to cut through that rubber in a nice easy motion. That's an evolution that will be shown in future minutes for uh, training. Here's another modification of it there that Pat has. Again, all we've done is take some uh, fishing line, that's 40 pound test line, as well as two uh, dipsticks from an uh, automobile. Markers. Markers come in handy. We uh, man and machine operations. It's best if you can draw where you want the operator to make the cuts. It makes a life a lot easier and it's gonna be much better for your operation. Screwdrivers, mirrors, the dental pick, Jim Sanders has over there the uh, vice grips. With your titanium rings, you can, take, you can take the vice grips, you could squeeze it onto the titanium and it will actually cause the compression will cause the ring to snap in half. So your vice grips come in ha pretty handy for that. As well as your tin snips, you can do a lot of good cutting with the tin snips, uh, whether you're cutting sheet metal or again if you're at that playground park and you need to get a child out of a swing, the tin snips work pretty well. We talk in a lot of our classes about a tape measure. Tape measure is, is very handy. It's a couple of things you want to think about. Where is the victim and how are you going to get the victim out? It's great to perform the extrication, but in a lot of our evolutions, we want the students to think outside the box. Is there enough room to get the victim out? How much of a cut are we going to make? Say you have a person impaled on rebar. How much room are you going to need to actually get the person out of the, uh, out of the object that they're caught in? The back of the ambulance transporting the person to the hospital. Are they going to fit in the back of the ambulance, let's say with an impaled section of fence? Having that tape measure, you can make the proper measurement and know if we're going to make it or if we need to make modifications in the back of that ambulance, such as taking out the stretcher bracket or maybe even having to reverse the stretcher in order to get the victim inside. Shims. Simple wooden shims work very well. If you've got somebody's hand that's compressed somewhere and you're waiting, let's say, for an airbag or to use a porta power unit, simple shims can be put in place, tapped in, and provide enough leverage that it may even lift the object up enough that you could free them out of that area. Hacksaw blades. Again, doing some of your nice smooth cut work. Jimmy's got over here the uh, whizzer saws. We have two whizzer saws that we wanted to show you. The one that Pat's holding has the trigger is in the open position, all right? 
We can connect our air source here and the operator will control the flow. The problem that you find with the whizzer saw is that it's a very touchy trigger. Modification that we've made on ours is Jimmy simply has his trigger taped, right? We will put an airbag controller onto the end of the hose there and with the flow of the airbag controller, we can modify nice and easily the flow of air that we want. It gives the operator a little bit more control of the precision cuts that they want to perform. Different modifications that we've made to some spoons. You can see we have uh, teaspoons, we have some uh, butter knives here. What we would do with them, if we're doing some sort of ring evolution, Pat can provide protection for the victim. So if Jimmy was going to perform a cut with, let's say, a whizzer saw or some type of Dremel tool, we're not going to injure our victim. Right? Snap ring pliers. Again, once you cut the ring, we can use the snap ring pliers right, in order to spread the ring open and get the ring off the person's finger. The manual ring cutter. We have this. All right? Works well on soft gold. On a lot of the new, uh, new metals that people are wearing today, such as titanium, it doesn't work at all. Rubber bands, which we've shown on some of our previous episodes. The rubber band works great where you can get it underneath the ring and with a little soapy solution and using a shimming method going back and forth, you're able to get the ring to loosen up and to slide over the knuckle. So as you can see, these are some pretty basic tools, pretty inexpensive stuff that we have here. Again, when you make this bag, think of practical stuff that you're going to be able to use. Don't just become a pack rat and throw a ton of tools into one bag. This will all help out your operation. This will at least give you a good starting point, and hopefully you'll make a successful rescue. I'm Mark Gregory, along with Pat Nichols and Jim Sanders, and thank you for watching Fire Engineering's Training Minutes.